Well, hello there, friends. Another Italian classic today. A lot of you have asked for it. Cacio e Pepe. How to make this beautiful pasta, nice and creamy without adding cream. Beautiful Pecorino Romano cheese and black pepper. We're gonna marry those two together and serve them with a beautiful pasta. We'll show you how to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, we're making Cacio e Pepe. Okay, friends, well, for such an easy recipe with three ingredients, you would think it's not that big of a deal, right? Well, there's a lot of little intricacy things, so we're going to go through it. Simple. I'm going to give you the original, traditional, easy way to do it. The secret is very simple. is to make sure we do not overcook the cheese. If the cheese gets to over 180 degrees, 190 degrees, the protein are going to denature, and it's gonna break down and it's not gonna work. It's very simple, I'm gonna show you how to avoid all this, okay? So, uh, we got water boiling. Normally you put a lot of uh, salt in the water when you boil pasta. We're gonna put just a pinch because the Pecorino Romano that we're gonna use is very salty. So just a little bit of salt in the water. I'm using a fry pan, you would think. If you use a fry pan to cook a pasta, it's because I want the pasta to be whole and I want the least possible amount of water so then my water is very starchy. If I put too much water, I lose the starch, and the starch is gonna be extremely important element, ingredient in the pasta. Very simple, my friends. Let's talk a little bit, by the way, it smells amazing in here because I am toasting my peppercorn. I'm toasting the peppercorn because it releases, like any spice, any dry spice, you should toast them first, a little bit, in a fry pan, just until you can smell them. You can smell the smoky, pungent flavor of black peppercorn just in the fry pan for a few seconds. You smell it, you'll know. The whole house is gonna smell delicious. Hot water. Let's talk a little bit about the pasta. Uh, you can buy any pasta you want, obviously, friends. It's a spaghetti. I like to use a spaghettoni, a big, a big uh, spaghetti. Or you could use a, a uh, uh, any kind of pasta you want, really. It's, it's up to you. Uh, bugatini is wonderful. It's a big spaghetti with a hole in it. It's wonderful for the sauce. You can use a bugatini. Now, friends, on the pasta, I'm using a a, a, a pasta that is, a, when they make it, they use a bronze uh, uh, dye, and it creates a, a rough texture. As you can see right here, it's a rough texture, and it creates a better texture so it absorbs more sauces. And, and I'll tell you on the box, it's usually bronze, bronze uh, dye that is used in comparison to a, a less expensive pasta, like this one right there, friend. And what they do, they, they use a, um, a silicone dye. It goes a lot faster, but no texture, smooth. Less expensive, a lot, lot less expensive, but not the same texture. If you can afford, buy yourself a better pasta. There's so many wonderful pasta out there. Just want to make sure it says browns dye on it, okay? So it'll give you the texture. Now, this right there is a, a, a brand that most Italian restaurant uses. Am I okay right there, Jack? You can put it right here, you can see it. This is the Checo, you can see it everywhere. This is, a, and it's used in most good Italian restaurants. Also browns dye, not quite as much texture as a, a brand like this one right there. Um, uh, but, but, but still nice. You find it everywhere, and, and like I say, most Italian restaurants, if you have extra money, you can use a, 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 a better brand. It's up to you, my friend, okay? So, the pastas are gonna go, we're gonna put them in the oven. We're not gonna use this guy right there, so we're gonna remove it. We're gonna put them in. It's all about the, the make sure we don't overcook the pasta, and if there is flour, see, I always measure, if there is extra flour, put it in there. I use this, um, this uh, fry pan here, so then uh, I don't have to break the pasta. And all I gotta do is just check them every so often to make sure they don't stick to the bottom because obviously the, the heat is right on there. We're gonna put them 12 minutes. Look, 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 they got me a big timer. Jack got me a, a timer because I don't know how to use my phone. <laughs> so I got 12 minutes, so much easier, right? I take the phone and try to figure out how to do it. Right there, 12 minutes, I'm good to go. All right, look, put the flour you got in your container. And, and if there is extra flour in the, in the package, you put it in there too. 
put it, whatever you can get in there. Beautiful organic wheat flour. They taste so much better. At the end of the day, you're only as good as the ingredient you use. We're gonna talk about that with the cheese. The black pepper, my friend. I use a Cambodian, co co I, I can never say it correctly, Cambodia black pepper, compo. You can use whatever pepper you can find. This is extremely fragrant. It's a little smoky, I love it. And I put it in, after I toast it, I put it in my mortar, mortar and pestle, I can never say it right. And I grind them on the side right there. So then it's evenly grounded, okay? And I promise you, friend, fresh ground black pepper is amazing. Should give it a shot. If you don't have it, use your regular pepper meal, my friend. That works also perfectly fine. You put the same pepper in there or you put good pepper and you'll be perfectly fine, all right? So now we got the pasta going. We're, good, we're ready with the pepper. Let's talk about the cheese. Boy, those things are heavy. Let's talk about the cheese, my friends. I use a Pecorino Romano. Pecorino Romano, difference, difference between a Pecorino Romano and a, a Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano, the Pecorino Romano is made with sheep's milk. It's not cheap, but it's sheep's milk versus cow milk. And it's very salty of a cheese. So that's why whenever I make this pasta, and by the way, Let's mix it a little bit to make sure. If you have a regular pasta pot, you don't need to worry about that. Um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. It happens, to me, it happens to me all the time. I forget what I'm supposed to say. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. I was talking about the cheese. Sheep's milk versus cow's milk. Pecorino Romano is the traditional cheese to use. You can also use Parmesan or Bajan if you want. You mix them together. It's really up to you. When sure you buy a Pecorino Romano, you'll see the cost. I grinded it, I ground it all up. I didn't save the piece. Make sure there's some, there's black. That's the Pecorino Romano, traditional Pecorino Romano. It's got the black uh, the crust on the outside of it. So friends, I did a, um, a four ounces of cheese. I'm using four ounces of, uh, of pasta per serving. I'm only doing one serving, it makes it easy for me so I can concentrate on talking to you. And this dish, this dish, to tell you the truth, it's really made for two, three serving, maybe maybe four serving, but it's very uh, uh, temperamental of a dish. And it's fragile. You cannot reheat it very well. So don't be said, oh, you know, I'm gonna make uh, uh, a cacio e pepe for 12 people. It's complicated, unless you make the sauce in advance, and that's a whole different video. In the meantime, I got four ounces of cheese. I got a little bit here, and I got a little bit here. Very important cheese, friends. Then when you grate the cheese, you use this, this part of the grater. You see, this part right there of, of the grater produces too long of a piece of cheese. The cheese has to be extremely, extremely fine. Otherwise, it doesn't have time to melt. It will separate it before it melts. So it's very important you get it right there, see? Now those are dangerous, let me tell you. You gotta be careful when you use those, okay? Don't ever use this. <laughs> All right? And so you use this right there. It's the it's complicated one, it's, but it creates beautiful, you see, fluffy cheese. Very small cheese, it's very, very important. So, four ounces of cheese, grated, it's about a cup. For those of you that don't do a, a scale, it's about a cup. Friends, we're gonna wait, we got another seven minutes uh, because we need the pasta water to, for the next step. All right, so we're gonna wait. I'll, I'll come back about a minute before the pasta is ready. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, friends, well, the, um, the pasta took a little bit longer, just watch it. Make sure it's cooked to your liking, friends. Okay, it could be 12 minutes. It could be 13 minutes. We're gonna put a little pasta right in there and we're putting water with it. And that's gonna keep the pot hot. Okay, there's no heat, no heat in the pot. We don't want the pot to be too hot, friends. So we take a little bit of the pasta water, about three or four ounces of the pasta water, and the pepper is already in the pan, okay? That gets the pan nice and hot. Now what we're gonna do, friends, we got Pecorino Romano right there. We're gonna take a little bit of the water, another two or three ounces, or maybe not so much, just two ounces, and we're gonna make a paste. We're gonna make a paste, you see? And this is gonna temper the cheese, so the cheese is not gonna get to the high temperature of the water, okay? You're making a nice paste, you see right there? So now the cheese has been tempered, you see, right there. 
and this is about uh, uh, three and a half ounces of the cheese right there, okay? Now we're gonna take that paste that we have right there, friends, and we're gonna add it to our uh, uh, pasta. And then we're gonna mix it. And we're gonna mix it, and we're gonna mix it. And we're gonna create this beautiful cream I was telling you about. You see? Now, this is very important that it doesn't get too hot. That's why you don't put any heat in there. And right here, you got this beautiful, beautiful cream. You see it? Right there, creating. We'll take a little bit of a bigger spatula. You can put a little more cheese to drink it up a little bit more, but you have a beautiful. So remember the cheese is to be super fine, you see, because now the cheese is gonna melt immediately. And right there, my friends, you have yourself a beautiful cacio e pepe. Gorgeous, look at this. <laughs> It's gorgeous, you see? Put as much cheese or as little cheese as you want. You just want to make sure you're nice and creamy. And you see, no heat, no heat. Now, that's a dish, friends. You got to be serving right away because it gets cold really, really quick, my friends. You see? So we're going to take a little. Look how gorgeous that is. Look how gorgeous that is. We're going to twist a little bit. It's very difficult when it's a long, long, long pasta like that. Even if I take a pasta fork, we'll just take it. Put it right on there, friends. We'll take a couple of strands right there. And we're we'll gonna put it on top. A little more cheese, a little more pepper. And we're we'll gonna take, so look at beautiful, all of the pasta, all of the, um, uh, the, the, the sauce is, is beautiful and creamy. Let me take this out of the way here, so I can put it in here. I wanna put a little more of the sauce. I wanna show you how beautiful that sauce is. Look at this, friends. Look how beautiful that is. Put as much or as little as you want of this. <laughs> this pasta is in the middle. You know, I'm gonna put it in here. It's too beautiful. Look how creamy that is, friends. And remember, it's the creamy just with the cheese, with that separated cheese. A little bit of black pepper, freshly grated black pepper right there. And this, my friend, a little more cheese. And this, my friend, is a cacio pepe. Perfection. And you see, that was not difficult. The secret, the secret is to make sure, no heat, to make sure you do not overcook it, otherwise the cheese will separate it and it'll be a, look at that, look how gorgeous that is, friends. Can you get that, Jack? You see how beautiful that is? Look at this. Look how beautiful that is. You see the pasta? I cut it to perfection with this beautiful cream. So the quality of the cheese, the quality of the pasta is extremely important. And I'm gonna to try to be somewhat elegant. It's gonna be very difficult because those pastas are very, are very long. But I think we'll manage that. Mmm. 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 My friend. Got your pepper to perfection. <laughs> perfection. Remember all those little tricks. I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. That is perfection. I love it. <laughs> wow.